Hey, Tito. Uh, nice little shiner you got there. How hard's the training been going into this fight? Uh, training's been brutal, man. And it's not like I'm sparring against uh, young or older guys. I'm sparring against younger guys. I'm sparring against the guys who are fighting in LFA, who fight in the UFC, guys who are, who are studs, man. Uh, with my old wrestling partners uh, from college, uh, it's been a grind. It's been a grind, and I understand over the last uh, 18 weeks, I've been putting my body through hell. And, you know, we got one more hard sparring session uh, on Thursday, and it'll be done. And my sparring sessions have been getting better and better. My timing's been getting better and better. My cardio is as is, is best as it's ever been. Uh, not even ever. I mean, my cardio is always good when I fight. And it's just uh, one of those things that I put in the work. You know, I, I, I think this is kind of one of those things where they call karma, where you laugh at somebody for having a black eye. And I think the last time Chuck had a black eye, and I was laughing at him. So, But I guess I should have bobbed when I weaved uh, from the punch. It wasn't a bad one, or else it'd be completely swollen, you know, just a little small mark. But you got to have little war wounds before you go to war, and uh, I'm ready for it. It shows I'm ready for war. Have you seen some of the footage of his training leading into this? He's, some people have said he's looked a bit sluggish, a bit slow. Have you seen it? Do you think maybe he's trying to play a trick, or do you think maybe he's a little bit older than he thinks he is? I think he's sandbagging. I think he's sandbagging in, uh, in a factor that I, I don't think he's that slow. I, I hope he's not that slow. It's going to be a short night for him if he's that slow, huh? Um, I, I, I watched it and I had to take a step back and kind of think of the promotion side of it, kind of think back of the psychological side of it. Is he trying to make sure he slows down a little bit to make you think I'm going to be, he's that slow? Um, but at the same time, I'm ready for him to be super faster. I, him, I mean, I'm sparring with guys who are 27, 30 years old, young kids who are at the top of their game right now, who are grinding, who are trying to make a point off of me, and I'm battling back against them uh, and doing well against them. And it's just one of those things that uh, I, I I put that aside of me. I don't think about what I watched, what Chuck Liddell did. I look about a Chuck Liddell that beat me the first and second time. That's the Chuck Liddell that I'm ready to fight. Last one from me. You mentioned the first and second time. If you can put it into words, how much does this one really mean to you? I mean, it's the rivalry that set up MMA almost. How much does this fight mean to you? This fight means the world to me. Um, I wouldn't have put 18 weeks into it. I wouldn't have put the grind in. I wouldn't be sacrificing Thanksgiving. I'm not having a Thanksgiving this year. The first time in my whole career of 21 years, I want to have a Thanksgiving. My Thanksgiving got to wait until, until Sunday. And my kids understand that and they're like, Dad, we understand it's okay. We want you to win. Whatever it takes to win, we want you to do. And this is just a factor, just how much this fight means to me. I'm willing to sacrifice everything in the world to make it happen and uh, I'm gonna get my hand raised. When you talk about the layoff, you know, a lot of fighters say ring rest isn't a real thing. Is, in your opinion, is the ring rest going to be an issue for him? And let alone the physicality, he hasn't been in there taking the shots that you've been in there taking. How is that going to play out against him in this fight? Well, you know, I think it's going to play out uh, when it comes to November 24th. You know, he says that he doesn't have any ring rust and bullshit. Not even ring rust, just the emotion factor of fighting in front of, you know, 12,000 people. You know, being on the main event. He has all the pressure in him that he has to beat me. He has to stop me in the first round, as he says. His job is to try to knock me out in the first round. Go ahead and prove that. I'm willing to see if he can try to prove that because I'm going to prove I'm going to knock his ass out. I'm going to show that I'm a better fighter. I'm going to show that I'm more aggressive. I'm going to show I'm stronger, faster than he's ever seen me. And like I say, on November 24th, live on pay-per-view, people will see that. And I'm thankful for Oscar giving me this opportunity. I'm thankful for uh, Chuck wanting this fight because I get redemption. I get an opportunity to revenge, and I'm happy for it. Will you be happy with anything outside of a knockout, or is it a knockout? You have to have a knockout to be happy with the win here. No, whatever it takes, man. Choke out, knockout, submission, I, I, it don't matter. Whatever it takes for me to win. I would like to get a full-out brawl battle back and forth, you know, where he gets dropped, I get dropped, and we get back to our feet, we drop ourselves again. Give the fans what they want to watch on pay-per-view, and that's what it's truly about. Give them an excitement where it's like, wow, that was worth every one of my dollars. So, Tito, obviously we just had the uh, 25th anniversary of the UFC. Your footage was all over the place. I feel like this is perfect timing to even reinvigorate you even more. I mean, you're very fired up, but how do you feel when you looked back on your old footage in the heyday of what Tito Ortiz was? I was a young kid who was just learning as I went along. Uh, I was faking it until I made it, and when I made it, it was winning that world title. Uh, yesterday, I posted a picture because yesterday was the birthday of the 25th year um, of me holding my five belts, and each one of those belts were a different design, and it was a trip because I was just like, I've been through the grind like no other fighter has done. Um, I was in there before the, the Fertitas were there. I was the champion before uh, the Fertitas and Dana were there, and I was there almost until they were done. Uh, but. I'm thankful for the fans. I'm thankful for Dana. I'm thankful for Lorenzo and Frank Fertitta to give me the opportunity to be who I am. It would never. It would make me. It would make me who I am today. I mean, I, I'm made through UFC. You know, I'm thankful for it. Very, very thankful. So I get an opportunity now to fight someone that we have had rivalry back and forth like no other. They have been able to build it that we've hated each other, that we were never friends, and so forth. And now he has the truth.
We are no, we aren't friends. We are the biggest rival against each other. We are a complete nemesis of each other. And that's what I really have been focused on is the positive things that I've got through my career of mixed martial arts. I mean, what I would have been a high school wrestling coach and a teacher if it wasn't for fighting. I think I might have been. But instead of helping 15 to 30 kids in a uh, wrestling room or in a classroom, I'm able to help millions of kids across the world and showing what hard work and dedication can truly achieve. And it is hard work, you know. I get paid to train. I fight for free. Is it hard to straddle the lineup? Because Tito's revenge is obviously a selling point to this fight. But you also need to be able to sell the idea that Chuck is going to be a capable opponent. Is it hard to sort of, because, you know, you got such an important... I, I guess I, I, I left it up to Chuck to kind of show what he can do. And the stuff he posted, it didn't help. Um, you know, when we did KTLA and they showed the video footage again. I go, I hope you're sandbagging, dude. I hope that's not how you're truly going to expect to beat me, because he ain't going to beat me like that. Um, slow, uh, methodical, right hands coming from fucking left field. Uh, stuff like that's not going to work. Like I say, I'm sparring with faster, younger guys right now, wrestling with faster, younger guys. Uh, Guys who are knowledgeable, like Rafael Davis, who I've had through my whole camp for the last five years, actually six years, um, I've been grinding. I've been just putting the grind in. And it's not about what Liddell could bring. It's about what I'm going to show, what I'm going to present, what I'm going to perform, and I'm going to entertain for the fans who are going to watch the pay-per-view, as I've done over the last 21 years. And proof's in the pudding, man. The numbers don't lie. And I proved it when I went to Bellator. I proved it when I was in UFC. And people like to watch Tito T's fight because I come with heart and soul. And I wear my heart on my sleeve like no other. And I, I, put, I pre prevail and I put my hand up each time. And if I win, if I lose, just as long as I go out and I put on a show, that's important to me. What did you learn from those first two fights mostly that you can use in this fight? Um, you know, I, I think uh, just uh, combinations, you know, not looking for the one punches. Uh, counter punching, uh, not trying to block every single one of his punches, but firing back off of them. Uh, you know, setting the punches for the takedown. Uh, dominate the position. You know, I watched a Khabib and uh, Connor fight. Uh, once he got the takedown, he laced the legs, and Connor wasn't going anywhere. I will do the same thing. Biggest fish you ever caught last Biggest week? Biggest fish I caught uh, <laughs> was actually with uh, TJ on the hot tuna. It was a 427-pound bluefin tuna. Yeah, that was, that was off of, uh, from Wicked Tuna, my boy uh, TJ. So TJ's my man. <laughs>